Rick William passed away. This ship hit rough water that day. Someone turned the bridge over to a captain named Chambers. My blood crawl, things start to fall. Hold me head when I sail a ball. Captain, this ship is sinking. Captain, this seas are rough. Oh yes, we gas tank almost empty. No electricity, we oil pressure reading low. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. Okay, what's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? Um, let's talk IPCO um, again. Yes, it's the IPCO week because we have 10 members of parliament in the Netherlands, so we need to break it down. Now, um, the Minister of Finance was asked, on the finances of St. Martin um, contributing to these wonderful members of parliament in the Netherlands. Yes, we are no news, so we got to focus on the things that really don't matter. Uh, this is what the minister said on Wednesday about the cost related to the members of parliament dealing with the IPCO trip. The cost to IPCO, I believe, I don't have the exact figure, but I can get an, an amount for you like I've done in the past um, via writing. And yes, it will cost more than previously budgeted. It is not in the budget currently, because it was not budgeted for nine factions. So this will unfortunately um, cost us more money and we'll have to find the liquidity to cover this. And also in regards to, you mentioned the four factions um, and now I believe nine factions, this also potentially can cost more money, yes. Um, MPs don't have to hire faction staff, that's on the MPs. Um, but government can, does not have a say in saying, no, don't hire faction staff. So yes, it pot potentially can have more costs. I believe some MPs already have um, hired a new faction. So I have to get this information to be able to um, correctly answer you. But yes, it will have a cost. It does have a cost in the budget and will have an effect on our liquidity because we, that wasn't budgeted prior. Okay, so the minister, um, again, continues to be the cheapest minister of finance in St. Martin's history because he always does pick every little thing to complain about because it costs money. Hence the reason why he's the minister of finance. Um, but from what I understand, the former prime minister, Wycliffe Smith, um, wants to have some type of prayer for the members of parliament at IFCO right now. Um, Pastor Smith, are you there? Yes, Andrew. Good evening, good evening. I am here, Pastor Smith, and I'm here to pray for the members of parliament at the IPCO session. Andrew, I think it is important that we come together as a nation and pray for these greedy politicians that is in the parliament. Let us pray. Father, we begin to pray for the demonic force of the tallest member of Parliament, Rolanda Bryson. Please touch his heart as you continue to guide him in the right direction and make sure he doesn't get re-elected the next time around. Father, please, I pray for the worst president of Parliament in St. Martin history. I know she is, and I know that Sooner or later, she will understand that no matter what, she will always be the worst president of parliament. Father, let us pray for Akim Arinel. We need a prayer session for him as much as possible. Father, please, we need you. Also, I would like to pray for Chanel Brownville as he continues to work. Um, Pastor Smith, I don't think that's some kind of how. Father, Pray for Sarah Westcott Williams as she continues to oh. be the vampire of the Parliament of St. Martin, who never ages. 
I wish I had her genes. Father, I also pray for Ludmina Duncan and Ludmina the Weaver. Why I put them both together? Because both of the names is Ludmina. Father, I also pray for the soul and the heart and the whole spirit of the one and only PFP leader, Melissa Gomes, because she continues to go in the wrong direction, Father, and you know exactly what I mean. Father, I pray for the rest of the delegation and please allow them not to be re-elected so Sir Martin could get a Christian party, members of parliament only. Thank you, Father. Okay, all right. Thank you, Pastor Smith, <laughs> for that wonderful prayer. <sighs> anyway, electoral reform. Yes, it's coming sooner than you think. Town hall meetings, there's going to be a whole campaign that is happening. The Prime Minister mentioned it on Wednesday during the Council of Ministers press briefing. I also asked her the exact date for elections, 2023, 2024, 2025, when we have any elections. We're going to have it tomorrow, we're going to have it next month. When? This is what she said. Thank you, Andrew. In terms of <clears throat> the timeline for the electoral reform public awareness campaign, as I mentioned, before traveling, um, it had set to start the 6th of September. It was delayed based on the discussion we had to have in Parliament, and thereafter I traveled. So now that I'm back, I will update as to, after sitting with the committee, how we will be moving forward in terms of our visits to the neighborhoods and bringing the necessary awareness, because it requires collaboration, and we would want also the speakers to come forth. And even just in listening to the question earlier about having nine factions that's that's erroneous we don't have nine factions we still have the five factions and you have independent members our electoral system does not recognize independent members as factions per se it's not defined so that's definitely something we need to deal with within the reform and the people of saint martin they're considered that that's how they're considered but they're not defined as such yeah so um while we applaud um, or we would want to have everybody have their right to do as they please, um, it, it does have a, a cost on the country. And um, is it reasonable for such a small country? Um, so indeed, electoral reform, I believe, especially with what has gone on for the past 12 years, is most definitely been talked about long enough. And we need some actions as to the date for the elections. I think I mentioned before that um, as per the law, it would normally be in January of 2024, and we have had discussions, but not a, like, say, hard and fast date to do it earlier in the end of um, 23 to avoid it being in the middle of the Christmas um, vacation or celebrations or to compete with Christmas. Um, so we have not set a date as yet, so hopefully towards the end of 2023. So, um, as you heard, we might have it in early 2024, but it's going to be late 2023 because they don't want it to be in Christmas like it matter. Shh. People want the elections as soon as possible. They want it tomorrow. Welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you. Let's begin. Are you ready to represent your side as JW3, Jam Where We Want presents versus Part 2. Who are you rolling with? Who are you rolling with? A head-to-head -head battle of rhythm, bass, and drive, all in one night, featuring from AXA Anguilla, Latest and Exodus HD. Say it with your chest, oh yes! And from Sugar City Sync Kicks, none other than Grandmasters. With a round one matchup of St. Martin's very own official band, The Ding Star versus No Limit. Impressive. Plus, DJ Big Boss and Maestro versus King Kimbe and Sexer. It all goes down at APS Parking Lot, also known as Talents Parking Lot, on Saturday, October 22nd, from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Tickets are $15 for early bird, $20 in advance, and more at the gate. Tickets are available via the K-Band app. Picture the studio on the Bush Road and at Van Dorp in Madam Estate. JW3 on Saturday, October 22nd presents Versus Part 2. Who are you rolling with? Flawless victory. 